Good morning. Let's talk about precognition and ESP. Now, I have a big problem with this subject. I am such a nuts and bolts type steam engine engineer that I find talking about metaphysical things of the mind and things which might be real or might be a fantasy of people's imaginations rather hard. But I have come to a serious conclusion that precognition in a military sense and in a practical everyday sense is real. But how does it work? <laughs> Welcome back. Today is just going to be a talk. It's going to be very difficult to illustrate. And I was sent this amazing article. It's called Rethinking Extrasensory Perception Towards a Multiphasic Model of Precognition. And it's by uh, Bat Moata and Edward C. May. And it's difficult reading. But it rang a bell with me, and I think it's going to connect to your life. How many of us have a feeling in our bones, a weird feeling that something is going to go one way or another? And how do we really trust this? So I'm going to start off with a story, and I think this is a good example of something weird that's happened in my life and in many other pilots' lives. You decide to go flying in your light plane. It's a beautiful day. You've got the plane at the hangar, and why not just take it up for a bit of a joyride for an hour? Yeah, sounds like a good plan. You jump in the car, and the car doesn't start. It's really weird. You drove it yesterday, and oh, jump start it. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. You get to the airport and for some reason, the FBO, the fixed base operator is on holiday and the fuel pump is locked. Oh, okay. All right. Well, let's go and check the plane, see how much fuel we've got in it. And you pull it out and the tow bar slips off and you fall over or something weird happens that or the key of the airplane doesn't quite fit for the first time just weird things it's like what's going on it's almost as if i'm being told a message not to go flying and these things are actual physical events things that don't actually happen sometimes they can just be a feeling but sometimes they're actually practical like the car doesn't start or somebody's on holiday and, and it adds up to a pyramid pinnacle where you change your mind and go i take a hint i'm not going flying today I don't really know why, but in the American term, three strikes and you're out, something's going on. And that's just my example. I'll go back to that to try and explain it to you, because I want your examples. And I've seen it at work where a very experienced manager enters your team environment, assesses what's going on, and makes a prediction for the future which turns out to be very, very true. Now, it could just be based on their seniority, their years of experience. But I think it's more than that. And another example I got from a Patreon. Thank you, Patreons. They're a doctor and they're looking to diagnose symptoms. Sure, they have a vast well of knowledge, but they often rely on more than just knowledge. They've got their age of the client, they've got how they present, but they feel in their bones that it's not the way that they think it is. They go and do a test for something which is at the back of their mind, and it turns out to be horribly correct. What's going on? Well, those examples I've just shared with you, and I'd very much like yours in return, 
can be militarized. Ever since the Vietnam War, which changed the mindset of the military, do we have to fight wars with aggression and death? Can we fight wars in novel ways? And that was an enormous program where they looked at everything. And one of the things they looked at was staring at goats. Yeah, we know about that. But they also looked at extra sensory perception, specifically distant viewing. What they found that ESP is statistically significant. That's bollocks term for it works. Here's just one example of a good science experiment the military did to kind of look at whether ESP or distant viewing is real. In a laboratory, they had a subject who thought they could do distant viewing and a teacher and they had bonded and then the teacher randomly drives randomly within 30 minutes of laboratory and stops his or her car at a place a lay-by a special tree a bridge a viewpoint a cafe i don't really care where it was and back in the laboratory, another researcher would ask the distant viewer, where is your friend? Tell me what they can see. And statistically, practically, nuts and boltsy, they could actually see where the person had driven. Now, it makes no sense whatsoever. It questions our belief in reality, in time travel, in the nature of the universe. But this is something that needs exploring, because the truth is still out there. Oh, I'm back. Before I go, I want your experiences. Have you ever felt in your bones or relied on your ESP prediction of the future in predicting something that might happen. Specifically, are you a focused expert in a narrow field? And I think that's what was going on with pilots. I think we're so tuned to look at a checklist of ourself, I'm safe, at the weather, at the fuel, at the aircraft, at the flying environment. We're taking in enormous amount of information and we're assessing it in a go, no, go decision. And I think the military must be like that. Imagine you're fighting in a team and suddenly one of you goes, don't go there. And you go, well, why not? It's just round the corner. And they're right. Is it because they know something? Are they just experienced? Or do we all need to trust that inner voice, to trust our bones. I believe so. What do you think? Comments below, like, and subscribe. Thanks.